Hello, it's Scott Manley here. And today is a fantastic day for physics and astronomy and people all over the world and big science. No, this is seriously important. The discovery, the observational verification of the existence of gravitational waves via you know direct methods. So let's rewind a little. Uh, let's just actually, let's explain. The result is that they observed gravitational waves on uh, September 14th, 2015. The signal was amazingly strong, which is good because our equipment is incredibly weak. Gravity waves are very hard to detect. So gravity waves come out of general relativity that are a prediction that was made by Einstein something like 100 years ago. And many predictions that came out of general relativity were easy to verify, such as the deflection of stars, uh, starlight due to gravity, uh, the precession of the orbit of Mercury. Those are you know, easy to, to verify, but gravity waves, it's taken over a century of you know, upgrading equipment and figuring out exactly how to do it to directly observe their effects. Now, actually, the effects of gravity waves have been observed indirectly in the past. Uh, there have been binary pulsars, and binary pulsars orbiting very close to each other will slow down as gravity waves carry away that energy. Well, this case, we actually observed the direct stretching and squashing of space-time as it went all wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey. The, the LIGO detectors are essentially big laser interferometers that fire lasers down two different paths and then they bring them back together after bouncing them around for a while and they can measure the, the they can measure the phase shift and this is you know really accurate way of measuring really tiny changes in distance and the the changes in distance are absolutely tiny over the over the size of these huge detectors, which are measured in uh, thousands of meters, the change is something like one hundredth of the diameter of a proton. So we're talking really, really tiny changes, but they were able to measure it, in part because the signal was so strong. The signal came from two black holes merging. The black holes were something like 30 to 50 solar masses each. And during the merger, they essentially spiral in towards each other. They have to orbit faster and faster. And so what you do is you get a frequency of waves that gets stronger and stronger and they get faster and faster. So you get this chirp. And uh, during the merger, the black holes have to get rid of a whole bunch of energy and angular momentum. And they do that is by essentially converting their energy by their converting their mass into gravitational waves. So during this event, which lasted something like 0 0.08 seconds, they, uh, they released something like three solar masses worth of energy. And you know, to put that in perspective, that's like every star in the night sky, every star in all the observed universe, not just in our night sky, everything that we can see emitting all their light, you know, it's just a ridiculous amount of energy. As Winston Zedmore would say, in Twinkie terms, that is a big Twinkie. Um, so yeah, this is stunning news that this has finally been directly observed. It's really exciting, and obviously it's a guaranteed Nobel Prize for someone in the team. Uh, the Nobel Prize Committee clearly have the obvious candidate for a winner, but they now have the unenviable task of deciding which three contributors actually are the prize winners. I mean, uh, if you look at the paper, which you can download, there's something like three pages worth of authors and another two and a half pages worth of institutions on there. This is huge science and it's taken a long time to get here. Back in the 1990s when I was actually studying my, at university, uh, there was a there was a team at the University of Glasgow where I did my degrees who were studying gravitational waves and we would have all these nice presentations and they would explain how the process worked and uh, I remember with my dad you know he was a little skeptical but I bet him a hundred pounds that gravitational waves would be discovered within a decade uh, I was wrong by over a decade and sadly he didn't live to see that but that's okay because I don't need his money anymore. Uh, yeah, so that, that's how long this has been coming. It is big news and it is just stunning to hear this. I'm not, I don't think I have time to do a real video on this because I have to go to work right now. Um, 
Oh, yeah, it's not just verification of general relativity now. I mean, people will look at this signal and they will analyze it and they will derive all sorts of other inf interesting information from it. Kip Thorne, I believe, pointed out that the some models of quantum gravity that have the graviton as a fundamental particle will by measuring the shape of this uh, gravitational you know signal they can now put lower or upper limits on the mass of a graviton if the graviton exists and it's not guaranteed that it does but i believe that his mass limit was something like 10 to the minus 55 grams so graviton cannot be any more massive than that based on this signal um yeah this is you know a great day it's going to be really fun to see what happens and we'll get more gravitational wave detectors as time goes on and hopefully get some better science over time I'm Scott Manley. Very excited for this. <laughs> Fly safe.